Good morning, Mexican American literature. Today is Wednesday, April 15th, 2020. My goodness, what year is it? I have no idea by now. <laughs> Um, today we are going to continue our conversation on perspectives on manifest destiny. This is part three. Uh, today, just like yesterday, you are going to, um, take a look at some art pieces and we're going to kind of think about this moment, this story, this important, um, story in American history, um, through the perspective of Mexican American authors and artists. So our questions today that you will answer are, do the poem definition by Luis Alberto Urrea, the political cartoon, never forget, and the mural titled uprising of las mujeres, um, depict or illustrate manifest destiny, positive or negatively. We're going to think about, um, just like we did yesterday, continuing to practice, what do we know and how do you know it? I want you to think about why you think the way you do. What do you see? How do um, how does your thinking work? So we're going to consider, um, after you answer that question, what details in the poem, definition by Luis Alberto Urrea, helped you come to your conclusion? What details in the political cartoon never forget? And I should add, by Lalo Alcaraz. Helped you come to your conclusion. And then what details in the mural by Judy, she's an LA artist. These are all California artists, actually, by Judy Baca, helped you come to your conclusion. And we're going to think about how do all three artistic depictions help you understand the idea of manifest destiny and what perspectives on manifest destiny do each of these texts attempt to represent. So we're going to continue to work on the skill. The skill is. Um, studying historical events through cultural points of view, especially the points of view of artists. So multiple perspectives. Um, yesterday, you explored Manifest Destiny through the painting American Progress by John Gast and Elbow Room by Schoolhouse Rock. And once again, I received some very impressive scholarly responses. And here's some samples. Check, take a look at this one. The painting American Progress and Schoolhouse Rock Cartoon Elbow Room illustrate the settlement of the Western territories as a positive event. Um, it shows, so American Progress, and something I would, would suggest to this student is to um, start the details um, in American Progress that helped me see this uh, show uh, Native Indians moving to the dark side as settlers move in toward West and uh, an angel is also going the same way as the settlers. Very, very good, right to the point. Three, elbow room, made it seem, I like it because now I know what you're talking about. Um, like everyone was cramped and expanded so they could have more room and they helped me understand that according to the settlers, it was fine to settle to a native land and find it, quote unquote, and expand territory when in reality they were just taking over, pushing natives back. Wonderful. Um, and then here's another one. Take a look. And the reason why I'm having you take a look at your peers' work is because, again, we we might not be in class physically, but it's important that you learn from each other. Look at how your minds are working. Compare the models that you are, are seeing with your own and learn from them. And then there's this one. The student chose to number it out exactly as I were, and it actually they also used the um, sentence frames. Thank you, and these are very insightful. So I'll take a look. Wow, right? These are scholars. Snap, 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 snaps. Okay, so here's what I love about these responses. Very and I want I want you to use. Um, what I want you to learn from is they explain their ideas clearly. They give specific, concrete details. Also, their writing is clear and it's easy to understand. This comes about as practice and also following directions. Thank you. I hear what you're thinking out loud and clear and even though you're not in front of me. So you use your words and that is power, power, powerful. So this is what I want you to learn to do for all occasions, my scholars, not just my class. It's so important, especially given the fact that the moment shows that we are more likely to become dependent on words on screens 
to communicate our ideas and to connect with others more than ever. Your ability to write and to make yourself understood will represent you, whether we like it or not. Your mastery of symbols and words on a screen might become your identity, your identity, your signifier of whether you're going to be a manager or a worker. So represent yourself with pride, master your words so you can command conversations. So um, back to the topic at hand. Um, so as a culture, an American culture, American culture, notice I'm not saying Mexican American, in American culture, uh, we look to artists and writers to express the ideas of our times. Their perspectives give us insights on the experiences behind the dates on the page. And that's why we spend so much time studying them. They also provide models for how we can understand patterns of thinking. So since yesterday, we revisited the perspectives of Manifest Destiny as it is popularly viewed through 19th and 20th century American art. Today, we're going to do the same thing through the perspectives of Mexican-American poets and artists. So here's your instructions. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to open the slides that are linked below. Uh and you are going to first take a look at the poem by Luis Alberto Urrea, titled Definition. It is a poetic depiction of Manifest Destiny that was written for a poetry collection titled The Tijuana Book of the Dead in 2015. So I'm going to open the slides. They look like this. Okay, so you're gonna open these and you're gonna notice these are these are the two big questions that we're taking a look at through these art pieces. Do Mexican-American poets and artists view manifest destiny as a positive or a negative event? And how do you know? So let's start with Luis Alberto Urrea. Here is the poem. You're going to read the poem more than once because you're gonna be confused first. Poetry will always confuse you first because it's asking you to enter into a conversation with it. To enter into a conversation with it, it asks you to ask it questions. So let's start with this poem title. The title is Definition. The first line, this is the first line. This is the second line. This is the third line. That's an interesting word. I wonder what it means. Maybe you should Google it. This is the next line. This is the whole poem. Definition by Luis Alberto Urrea. Illegal alien. Adjective. Noun. Period. How interesting. It's kind of setting it up as a dictionary. And then comes the definition, I suppose, a term by which an invading colonial force vilifies indigenous cultures by identifying them as an invading colonial force. So this makes me kind of think about that painting, American Progress by John Gast. So in that painting, who would he consider or who would he point to as the invading colonial force? And if so, who would be the illegal alien? And what is he saying about illegal aliens? How interesting definition, illegal alien, a term by which an invading colonial force Vilifies. So that word vilifies is so important. It means to make something hateful and disgusting. And look it up. See what the dictionary says. Vilifies. Indigenous cultures. So indigenous cultures. So probably cultures. I'm thinking if I'm thinking about that painting again, because that's what I'm connecting to by John Gast. Who is Urrea 
thinking about who would he point to there? And then identifying them as an invading colonial force. Read it another time by yourself. So does the poet now, can you answer the question, view manifest destiny as a positive or negative? And how do you know? Let's take a look at this. This is a political cartoon. Does the cartoonist Lalo Alcaraz view manifest destiny as positive or negative? And how do you know? So take a look at this. What do you see? Where does your eye go first? And why, I wonder. What are the details? What do those words mean? What do those words remind you of? And why? What moment is what moment or what moments is he referring to? All right. So does the cartoonist Lalo Alcaraz view manifest destiny as positive or negative? How do you know? And then here's this one. It's a little bit more complicated. There's a lot more to it. This is from a mural in Los Angeles called The Great Wall. And this the title of this particular panel in the mural is The Uprising of Las Mujeres. So take a close look. Does the muralist Judy Baca view manifest destiny as positive or negative? What do you think? How do you know? Okay. And that, my friend, um, is what you can do. Um, you're going to, after you take a look at those, you're going to answer the questions in writing. So the questions are, once again, do the poem definition political cartoon illustrate or depict manifest destinies as positive or negative? What details in all three pieces definition? Never forget an uprising of Las Mujeres by Judy Baca helped you come to your conclusion? And then how do these help you understand the idea of manifest destiny and whose perspective does manifest destiny represent? So um, you're gonna answer, here's some sentence frames. And here, this one's easy, you just insert them as, in, you only have two choices, positive or negative. The details, tell me what details in the poem helped you come to that conclusion. What details in the political cartoon fill it in? What details in the mural? And then all three text helped you understand the idea of manifest destiny because, okay, both, re or actually all three represent the perspective of. And that's it. Once you're done, um, take a moment to take a look at what your peers wrote out for you so um, and how they helped you understand. And feel free that as you take a look at other people's models to maybe use them to continue to learn from them, to add, because uh, you'll be able to revise and edit um, your responses. So um, I look forward to learning from you, hearing what you have to say. If this is confusing, please show up to my office hours uh, today, um, two to three. I'll be happy to go through the lesson with you and we can talk about it and work on it together. You can even, you might even just submit it after our conversation. We've done that a couple of times with some students. So, um, Props to all of you for keeping up. If you haven't been keeping up, um, talk to me. Email me. I've, I've reached out to several of you. Um, I hope you'll connect with me and that you'll let me know 
what's you're struggling with and how I can help. So that's it. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Um, and let's make the best of this. Peace to all of you. Have a great day.